everybody, I'm Michaela C. Leggett, and I'm coming up on The D. McNear Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The D. McNear on the Air Show, where we highlight everyday people doing exceptional things. Because it's not about you, and it's not about me. It is all about the we. And we, me, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat because I have one of North Carolina's very own talented professionals, beautifully anointed wives and mother, an author, a person who's giving back and who has so much to give. But I'm not going to do anything else but let her introduce herself. <laughs> Welcome to the D. McNair on the Air Show. Tell everybody. <laughs> Why I think you are fabulous because I know your family does, but I think you're pretty fabulous. And I'm gonna stay on the edge of my seat. And guys, let me just warn you now: we are in a hot spot. We are actually on the road. I was able to catch this anointed person on the road, so you're gonna hear people laughing in the audience, talking because we're having a good time. But we can't pass this up. Tell me, and, and I'm gonna be her. Fan. Hi everyone, I'm Nakayla Leggett and I am a licensed clinical social worker here in the Raleigh-Durham area and I specialize in children and adolescents um, all the way up to the elderly population but I have a special certification in traumatized youth so I um, specialize in that and I recently authored a book Mama Wise My Flower Wilting and that book is all about how to help and assist your children and having that conversation about preventing and talking about bullying if they're experiencing it. So experiencing it. So it's all about how to have that difficult conversation and understand some of the signs because a lot of the times we miss the signs. So that is what the book is about and it helps have that conversation without, it has some therapy tips but it's all about the real live um, conversation that you can have every day. So it's not like a therapy book. Oh, and I like the fact that you said a real live because, Mama, why is my flower wilting? A flower is only alive while it's alive. Mm -hmm. And that's how your conversation should be. If you are talking to your children after they've been bullied for five years, don't feel bad. But we're coming up the rear. And so how did you come to say... I need to pin this. I need to pin this down. What made you say, I've got to pin it down? And write, Mama, why is my flower wilting? For me, it was a self-discovery moment. So it allowed me to actually tell my story through the lens of so many, like you said, I've helped. Mm -hmm. And so being able to have that training, to have that experience, and know that I needed to tell my story, and my story was important because as your show says, it's about the we. So me telling my story allows somebody else to have a voice to tell their story. Have a voice. So in bullying, there needs to be a voice, a positive voice. How do we, and this is coming from your book, I'm mama, I have children. How do we let our children have that voice? Are there words we should say or actions we shouldn't do? How do we allow and support our children to have a voice to tell us that they're bullied. To me, it's a, those everyday conversations. If it's dinner, mm -hmm. let's talk about the day. Not necessarily just, how was your day? Tell me something good about your day. Tell me something that could have been better about your day. So you have an opportunity to have conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a different dialogue than saying, how was your day? And someone's just saying, okay. Versus, tell me two good things about your day and one thing that could have been better. Now we're having problem-solving conversations. And if we're having a problem-solving conversation, it allows that child to understand that, oh, there are other people that's willing to understand and listen to me mm -hmm. and help me through it. Conversation. So let's say I'm a child, mm -hmm. and you ask me about my day, and I say, eh, it was all right. What could a parent, a mama, a daddy, a brother, a friend say back when I just go, uh, it was okay? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when um, parents come in and they ask that same exact question, like, how, how would I know her day was bad? How would I know if they was bad? And I would say, when they say that word, it was all right. I say, well, let's sit down and let's talk about what an all right day looks like. What does is, what is an all right day look like versus a great day? So if you can tell me what a great day looks like, I would know something is off in your all right day. And maybe it's bothering you a little bit, but not enough that you need to talk about it right now or you don't know the word to talk about it. 
that right now. But me having that conversation and knowing the difference between how you're describing your day in these one mm -hmm. sentence or these one word statements mm -hmm. allows me to dig a little deeper once I get to understand my child dialogue. So, okay. and the nonverbs. Is oh, it okay? So it isn't oh. just <laughs> at the verbal. Right. You gotta deal right. with the nonverbals. Okay. Okay. Non okay. non because we can get an all right or it was all right. You, like, you really got to look and understand what your child is actually doing when they do that. So I would say for me, I see now that I really needed you some years ago, but I am so thankful for grace and mercy that mm -hmm. the kids seem to have turned out great. I think they're great. <laughs> I think I was missing it with that because I do yeah. know I got a lot of those. It was all right. Mm -hmm. And I would push a little bit. But I think I was pushing right. versus trying to listen right. and find out what is it that makes a great day for my mm -hmm. child. What are the signals that I might see that lets me know another child's being bullied? Mm -hmm. And particularly, let's say if I'm a teacher, so right. this is helpful for teachers. Mm -hmm. What are some signals in the classroom? So it's not mom and dad at home. It's not grandma. Mm -hmm. But in the classroom, what are some things that might signal to me, even though the child hasn't told me they're being bullied? behavioral changes that is a big one in the book you will understand how she goes from this bubbly little girl to all of a sudden start to have um fights with her brother every night or she goes and mm -hmm. she doesn't really want to talk about her day so those moments where she's having tantrums and not wanting to go to school and that wasn't something that was an everyday thing for her because like you said where is that glee that was when you just hop in my car and you're ready to tell me about the new friend you made. You're ready to tell me about how good lunch was today, how good you did at PE today, and how much you learned today. But all of a sudden, all of that starts to change, and all you want to do is be in your room. All you want to do is um, isolate yourself away from people. And if someone asks you questions, it's quick to be defensive. So you catch those defensive techniques a lot of the times because they don't know how to defend at school. So um, it's one major thing that I tell parents to look out for that just from trauma in general. So mm -hmm. bullying is a form of trauma, but you have other forms of trauma, the physical abuse and um, psychological abuse and things mm -hmm. like that. So one of the things that the body does, it fight, flight, or freeze. So it fights because it needs to get out of a corner. It doesn't know how to get out of the corner. It freezes because it does not know how to respond. Mm -hmm. Or it will flight because the only the best thing to do is run. So you got to okay. understand. So a big piece here, she was doing almost all of them. She would fight with the family. So number one, fight. Mm -hmm. She would flight in school, meaning like try to isolate True. herself away from people. And she, the freeze wasn't quite there, but the fight and the flight, they altered away from each other. So it isn't one that you have to stick with. A lot of the times, depending on the different settings, you can be a three, all three of them. So, so there was fight, fight, flight, or freeze. And freeze. So fight because you you basically you're having to defend yourself. Yes. There's this whether it's anger mm -hmm. or wall or whatever. Right. And you've got flight trying to get away. Mm -hmm. And then you've got freeze. Mm -hmm. Basically, they have just stopped in time. Right. They're not they're not live. Right. They're, they're wilting. Mm -hmm. You're seeing them stop growing mm -hmm. and start to wilt. Mm -hmm. These are some powerful tools. And if you guys are just tuning in, you're watching a D. McNair on the Air show where we're highlighting this exceptional author, professional therapist. But we are talking about, and I'm going to do it again, Mama, why is my flower wilting? Because what you want to do is basically say, if my child is wilting and they're not living with a smile, with a glow, because children overall should be happy children. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. You want to get this book and get the information, get the tools, get the skills, get the knowledge, get the background that lets you yeah. I want. I gotta do it, guys. You know, D loves to give you a, a little peek, so I'm not gonna give you too much. Again, we're talking about Mama. Why is my flower wilting? Reading from the back cover. Mama, why is my flower wilting? One day, Cassidy started to have trouble at school. Isn't that how most of us learn about bullying? Mm -hmm. And at home, she started to have tantrums in the morning before school. Isolated herself in her room and be mean to her family. Many of the teenagers, young adults, mm -hmm. when we listen to the parents in media, in the interviews, they said the children were isolating themselves. Mm -hmm. They had became rude, insubordinate, disobedient. Mm -hmm. All of those are signals. And by the way, we're not judging people. Right. How 
when should you go get help? I know what we read in the book, mm -hmm. but all of that, I want to stop right there and say she was in her room. She was being mean to her fan, family. We're talking about the young lady in the book. Mm -hmm. When do you go get help? You know, we all like to say, oh, it'll pass. Right. Well, I know that something else happened at home, so I think that's what is causing it. When should you go get help? When you start to see the signs. To me, I don't think that you need to wait until they bubble and manifest into something bigger than what it is because it'll take more time to dial it back. But if you go, therapy, and therapy is not this thing that you go to when it's your last option. <laughs> I, as soon as people walk in my <laughs> office, I'm like, it's not. it shouldn't be the last option. Okay. And you shouldn't feel like you're on your last leg, so I'm here to see you. It can be that you're just coming in to get additional tools because what you, do, what you are doing is not being effective in what you're trying to see happen. So what is your results and what is your goal that you're trying to see? And are is the way that you're interacting with your child getting you to that goal? So that's when you need to reach out and get some assistance. It doesn't mean that you're a bad parent. To me, that means you're an awesome parent. That means that you want to reach out and seek out and don't feel like you're a perfect parent, superwoman, superman, taking the cape off, and you're coming in and you're getting some support where you need support at. Just like you would go to your doctor. At, at least once a year, you would go to the doctor and get uh, an exam and a follow-up and understand and make sure I'm healthy. And for the doctor to tell you you're healthy. You may feel you're healthy, but I, sometimes I need that additional support on the outside to say, yes, girl, you're healthy. Yes. <laughs> and that's the same thing you have with therapy. You can walk in there and I say, you're doing great. <laughs> or I can just give you some additional tools to help you on your way. It's not a forever thing. Well, it's, uh, let me ask, because mm -hmm. guys, I know you've seen the information going across the bottom of the screen. So make sure you write that down because you can get more information. For those who may say, I don't think I need to walk into your professional office, mm -hmm. but they want to get more information. They want to have a better understanding or they've read your book and they, they have questions. You're out in the community as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's one of those times where I'm really excited to have a guest where they're not just in the professional arena, they're in the community. So again, I tell you guys this all the time. Anytime you hear, you see something on the D. McNair on the Air show and you want more information, reach out to me. Look at the contact information. Find out how to get connected because it's not about you and it's not about me. It is about the we. So please don't be afraid of that word therapist or when she says my office. Right. Her office in truth is anywhere you meet her. Mm -hmm. I met her in the community. I met her when there were tons of other people around, but she had time for me. Just like we all want to have time and do have time for our children. Bullying is on the rise. Yes. <laughs> if my young person, for whatever reason, I, they're kind of having a tantrum, they're right. angry or they're shouting, do I ask them or try to get that dialogue going right at that tantrum time? Or do I try to create this fun time? To me, it will be create a, a fun time or at least a more stable environment okay. for conversation. Because if you're trying to talk, even me as a, an adult, you're trying to talk to me when I'm in an emotional state, my idea is to get you far away from me as quick as possible. And most of the time, most human superpower is anger. And that outburst allows you to, allows people to move away from you and not want to be near or around you. So I got my need met mm -hmm. in that moment. So if you're gonna try to have a conversation with me that's very enriched, that's asking all of these wonderful questions, I'm not gonna be here for it. I'm not gonna to wanna to hear it. I don't wanna to listen to it. I just want you to leave me alone because I'm having an emotional moment and maybe all I need is a hook. Actually, maybe all I really do need is space. And so you gotta understand your child to know that just because you like hugs, the child may not like hugs if they're in an emotional state. Because I know in a certain state that I'm in, you can't touch me. <laughs> and hey, look, amen, amen, and amen. And um, even though we're talking about bullying, yes. recognize bullying is not just a child thing, it's an adult it thing. It is, it's an So I love places. how you, you said that. We, mm -hmm. need to, we just need to allow space at certain times. Right. So if you feel like your child is really being mean, but... They're being mean because maybe you're in their space. Mm -hmm. Give them a little space so they can find their inner strength. Right. And you can support that inner strength mm -hmm. to tell you about it. Mm -hmm.
I want to tell them, because I don't want to dare run out of time without telling them what the book does. This book sheds light on some of the overlooked behaviors that may be key components that a child may have experienced a traumatic event. Remember, she said that. Bullying, traumatic event. It is a traumatic right. event to a child. Mm -hmm. So your child may have experienced a traumatic event, such as bullying. It also gives caregivers some effective therapeutic tools to engage and assist the child through such difficult times. You need a tool. So as a therapist and as an author, you have penned this book that is just blessing so many people all the way around. But you didn't stop there. It's something else going on. So am I right? Did I not hear a little sneak peek? You've got another project coming. Yes. Tell them about the project that's coming up. So I have another project coming out, and it's all about my ability to heal from my childhood. And it's called Unchain Me Mama, The Forgiveness Factor. So some of Unchain those Unchain Me Mama. Mm -hmm. like I said, Unchain <laughs> Me Mama. Because I want to forgive you now. Forgive me. But in Teacher, we're having a good time here in the studio. I wish you guys could see the audience face. They're trying to contain their laughter. They don't realize D doesn't care if they overpower us up here. But hey, unchain me, mama. Unchain me. Mm -hmm. So unchain me, mama. Like in that title alone at the beginning, it's power. Because I never knew. Because a lot of the times we have daddy issues. We think we have daddy well, issues. And don't you all sit out there yeah. like we don't. We do. We do. But we also have mama issues. Like sometimes, like for me in the book, I talk about this, this topic of non-functional anxious love. Mm -hmm. And non-functional anxious love is like we always want our child to be better. Yes. Do better, have better. However, we don't teach them how to gain these things on their own. So we probably teach from this quote unquote tough love. Yes. And this tough love also can hinder the voice. Because be seen and not heard. Mm. <laughs> do and what I say, not do, what I do. Not what I do. And that was a big part of my raising. And I never felt like I had a voice inside of my home. And being that I also, like Miss Cassidy, went through bullying at school. Mm -hmm. So I had a double take. I had a double take of it. So it's taken me some time to find my voice. And through both of these projects, it's allowing me to find my voice and also give somebody else a voice, like I said. So these are both healing books, not only for the author, but hopefully for a lot of people in society to give them the opportunity to see that it's not just them. Because a lot of the times, for a long time, I thought it was a Nikayla issue. I thought it was just Nikayla. And so I tried to figure that out and I just kept hitting brick walls. And then when I started to go into my major, go into um, my career, I started to understand that it's not just me and I got to figure this thing out. Because so many people are looking and depending on me, including my own children. Yes. So if I don't figure it out, I'm going to be parenting from that same non-functional anxious love because I don't want them to experience what I experience. So I'm trying to shelter them instead of teaching them because I can't shelter them. They're going to be exposed to those kids at school. So you didn't have a voice is what you're saying mm -hmm. in your own home. In my own home, in my own school. Like it was just shelters to the point where I learned through laughter. Mm -hmm. I learned this thing called <laughs> assimilation. So um, instead of like running from my bullies or fighting my bullies, I became friends with my bullies which is something that many people don't or can't do, mm -hmm. but I just assimilated. It wasn't this big, huge, heroic, heroic thing, but it was the ability for me to like get through my day at school or get through my week at school. So by the time eighth grade came around, bullying didn't really exist for me anymore. Mm -hmm. In ninth grade, I just made a whole new identity. So mm -hmm. I just kept changing identities and then all of those identities came crashing on me my 25th year of life. So all of those things came crashing because it's like, what am I seeking? What am I searching? And how did I get lost? And so it all travels back to that third grade little girl who was lost. And so in the book, Unchained Me Mama, I write a letter to my daughter, in a sense, oh. apologizing in her adulthood for passing on the residuals of my hurt from my childhood to her and parenting her and not creating that emotional bond because that's what it was doing for me. It was not allowing me to create a bond with my daughter. 
who's now almost two, but I wrote it in the sense that she would be 20 and she's asking that question. Mm -hmm. And so that allowed me to really dig deep and try to find that healing and those words to help me get through it so I can give her that connection when she's two versus having a conversation when she's 20. This is a project that will give you your next stepping stone because we can't wait till we have our total wholeness to help our children heal. It's too late, but it's never too late to start from where you are. Mm -hmm. If you start with mama, why is my flower wilting? Anything that's not working for your child, whether we have a contribution to it as adults, whether it's just something happening at school, you have a chance to slow that process, stop that process, and then Unchain Me Mama allows you to be freed and walk in the same deliverance and the same freedom, maybe at the same time your young person does. Mm -hmm. I know that I have beautiful children who in their adult life really communicate to me, but they will openly say, I have apologized for times I realized I heard what I wanted to hear. Right. I never said to my kids, be seen and not heard. But sometimes my busyness, my rush, mm -hmm. didn't make them feel like they could have that freedom. Right. And they felt chained to mama's schedule, mm -hmm. mama's dialogue, mama's time frame. But thank goodness, because of people like you, I've had an opportunity to read a book, to get the information. I've had an opportunity to have a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, so if you are one of those people like me where you need to be live and in the flesh, I love talking to authors because then you really get the behind the scenes. And I'm not going to let her give you any more tips that you don't get an opportunity to get for yourself. Because I'm telling you, hearing it is one thing, but you need to hear it again. You need to read it again. You need to equip yourself for the now, for the tomorrow, and for the destiny that is ordained for you. When you read Mama Wise, My Flower Wilting, even if you're not a parent, we all know somebody, we do, that when you read it, you're going to go, oh, I see the signals. I hear the signals. Is that why? Every young person is not just going through the teen years. Mm. Sometimes they're going through a bullying. They're going through the lack of a voice. So if you're the adult, you don't have children, but you see yourself in Mama Wise, My Flower Wilting, then get the book. But make sure you also connect with me, the author. Get your hands wrapped around something beyond just the words. Get your hands wrapped around the experience of talking with a professional, mm -hmm. but talking with a wife, talking with a mother, talking with an author, talking with a person who's come out of bullying to the other side. And I can tell you, when I look at you, your flower's not wilting. <laughs> it is bloomed in all of its beauty and all of its glory. Her smile, for those who can't see, we actually have some of her family in the audience as well with us here today, and they smile and glow as well. All because when we can heal from the inside out, mm -hmm. when we can recognize the power we have, you can be a flower that doesn't wilt. You know, don't don't put yourself in wax paper and be <laughs> frozen. As she said, remember she said, fight, flight, freeze. Don't put yourself in wax paper. That's like being in a freeze. Right. Don't turn your back. That's just taking flight. Mm -hmm. And don't fight the bully. Fight to see the inner power come out and be powerful yourself. I'm telling you, Heavenly Spirit, it's been awesome, awesome, awesome. I, I still want to ask one other thing, though. You, you did talk about when people come into your office. When you are in the community and you are meeting people, do you ever have opportunities to see the young people themselves and see those signals in them for yourself? Depending on how long um, where the conversation is or how long I get to engage with them, but I do ask some of those questions because, like, being in my office and seeing me in the community, it's normally no difference because my personality shines in both. Which is and why so, we love her all the more. <laughs> so you really don't get a different person, mm -hmm. um, just maybe a different outfit. 
<laughs> so I tend to still have those conversations with the young people. Um, and sometimes I can't see it. Sometimes I can mm. see it um, immediately. And I've had parents, um, we went to a community event at a church mm -hmm. for um, our podcast. And when we went to the community event for the church, um, there were some young people there and they would come and they would just sit at the table just to blow bubbles and things like that. And you can blow the bubbles, see, having fun, right? You can blow the bubbles, but I'm having a conversation. School's about to start. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. What are you excited about? Do you have a lot of friends that you're excited to see again? Like, what is the scariest thing about going back to school? So having those conversations that just don't sound like it's interro like interrogating the, the child, mm -hmm. but just wanting to really know about them yes. as a person. Genuinely. Know. genuinely know and so. she is genuine I'm telling you <laughs> and so they normally just come out and they talk to me well I like something you said you said the only thing that might be different when people see you in the community is the outfit mm -hmm. that to me is a signal to something I, I'm telling you guys it's amazing when you can put this information together with this author because the signal is when the outfit doesn't match mm. it might be a sign about bullying because truthfully, when you see her in the community, the outfit, it really isn't different. The outfit just may be even more colorful because she's always got time. She always makes time to listen, listen, and yes, she does ask the questions. And she'll tell you, I asked her a few too because I was like, oh, wait a minute, I've got another question. To the point I thought, oh my gosh, I might better sign up, sign up for a legit therapy section, section here. But please. This is your opportunity. Dee wants to always highlight everyday people doing exceptional things, but you know what I tell you about that? Every day is just because you've been looking another way. Mm -hmm. Every one of us is exceptional. We all do some exceptional things. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we need to support one another. And remember, it is not about you. It is not about me. It's all about the we. And we have given you information, tips, tools, and she's given you a lot of herself. Michaela, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Make sure you check out the information on your screen. Make sure you connect with Dee. But more than that, connect with yourself and your young people who are all around you. Mm -hmm. Bullying, it can stop. Yes. And deliverance can come because your mama can unchain me mama. All right? Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you check out. You connect up with this wonderful, wonderful author, this professional, this woman who's making our community a better place. It's been great having you here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. This was amazing. It's amazing. Yes. She's amazing. <laughs> She's amazing. Thank you guys for watching the D. McNair on the Air Show. Please tune in every week because we're going to continue to do what we want and have to do, and that's support one another because we are stronger together. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Girl, it's been a bomb. Yeah.